This is a web server. Now, most people think that web servers are websites, but that's not actually the case. While every single website on the internet is powered by web servers, a web server is not a website on its own, but a computer which will send out websites files to other computers that request them over the internet. What I have here is one of, if not a, the smallest computer in the world, the Raspberry Pi. For around $70, this computer has everything you need to run a web server that can support a couple thousand people per second. The best operating system to run web servers is Linux, since it doesn't use as many resources as, for example, Windows or Mac OS. Out of all the Linux distributions, the one I chose to use is Debian, a light, no GUI operating system which is just perfect since I don't plan on using a screen with this thing at all. You don't need to use Debian for this tutorial, but any Linux distribution will work. Once you have a Linux terminal open, I recommend knowing what these commands do before proceeding. All of these commands will be available in the description. So the first thing you want to do when installing a new Linux distribution is update any package. You can do this by entering sudo apt-get update, followed by a sudo apt-get upgrade. You may need to press yes in the process. Running sudo apt-get update might take a while. The two most popular programs to run web servers are Apache and Nginx. For this tutorial, we're going to use Nginx since it's pretty much better in every aspect. To install Nginx, all you need to write is sudo apt install Nginx. Again, write yes. Now we want to figure out the IP address of the machine. Now, if we write IPA in the terminal, we'll get the private IP address of the machine. In my case, you can see that this is my private IP address. It usually begins with 192.168.something. If you write down that IP address on any web browser, you're going to get this page which indicate that Nginx has been installed correctly. You won't be able to access this website from outside your local network since your network isn't port forwarded, but that's for another video. The next thing you want to do is install a database so you can handle things like WordPress and PHP files. To do this, simply write sudo apt install mysql server. Now sometimes you're going to get this message that says package mysql server has no installation candidate. So what you can do instead is do sudo apt install mariadb minus server and then again press yes. Now mariadb and mysql have pretty much no difference at all so it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Now we want to finish setting up the database and to do this we use the same command whether you install mariadb or mysql. It's sudo mysql secure installation like this. So during this step is going to ask you multiple questions. So what you can do is first it asks you for the password for root, so the password you use to log in. Then when it asks you to change the root password you can answer no, remove anonymous users, yes. Disallow root login remotely, yes. Remove test database and access to it, yes. Reload privilege tables, yes. And that's it, now the database is set up. Now, after setting up the database, we want to install PHP. To do that, you do sudo add apt repository universe. Sometimes you're going to get this error message where it says that the add apt repository has not been found. To fix this, you just write sudo apt install software properties common. After that's installed, you can press the up arrow twice to run the add apt repository command once more. In my case, I don't really need to run this since this command is pretty much unique to Ubuntu users. So instead, I can skip straight to the installation of PHP with sudo apt install php fpm and php mysql. So what we want to do now is note down the version of the PHP you just installed. In my case, as you can see here, we installed PHP 7.3. Now in the final step, we want to edit the configuration file for engines. The command you want to write is sudo nano etc engines sites available default. This will open the file default with the nano text editor. Now, this part tells you that the root of the web server is located in this HTML folder. Now, in this line where it says index, we want to add an index.php. Now, to make sure that PHP works, you want to go down here by using the down arrow. We want to uncomment this part of the code, and we want to uncomment this part of the code. Now, inside of this PHP section, we want to delete this line and only keep the first one like this. And you can see here that the PHP version is already correct, since my PHP version is also 7.3 but for you it might be 7.4, so make sure to change that if you're getting any errors. Now you can save the file with Ctrl X, press Y and enter. Now you can check if there are any errors by writing sudo nginx minus t. And here you can see that everything is fine and there are no errors. Finally, reload nginx with sudo systemctl reload nginx. Now the web server is technically complete. And for demonstration purposes, if you go to slash var triple w html. Now as you can see here, there's one file currently present. And that's the page we saw right before when we entered the private IP address. To remove this file, we want to do sudo rm index.nginx debian html. And just like that, it's removed. 
Now, everything inside this HTML folder is not owned by your user. So what you want to do to edit and create files in here is you want to do sudo minus s. This is the equivalent of run everything in administrator mode. So if we now create an index file with nano index.html, we can write absolutely anything in it, save it. And if we now go to the web browser and reload the page, you can see that the text we just wrote is visible on the website. Now, let's say you want to test if PHP is working properly. To do that, we can just create a new index.php file like this. Inside the PHP file, we can enter this snippet of PHP code, save it. And if we now go back to the website, you can see that the PHP code is running properly. Now, writing every single file manually can be a bit of a pain. And you may already have website files that you just want to drag and drop into the server. To be able to do this, you have to download a program called FileZilla. Just search for FileZilla download, open the website, download the client, open it, and this is what the program looks like. So host is the IP address of the server we want to connect to. In our case, if you remember correctly, this is our IP address. Now we want to make sure that up here only the IP address remains, so remove any HTTP. In username, you want to write the username you use to log into Linux. In my case, it's pi. In password, you simply write the password of the user and in port, you try port 22. If port 22 gives you any issues, you can try port 21 instead. Press quick connect. This is sort of like a file explorer for the server. Now, you want to navigate to the root directory of your web server, which, if you remember, was slash var triple w html. And here you have the file we just created. Now, if you tried drag and dropping anything into the html directory, you're probably going to get an error. That's because the user you're logged into doesn't actually own this folder. To fix this, simply go into the CLI and write these two commands, where, for example, this part is the username of the user you're going to use to log in and FileZilla, in my case, pi. This means that pi is now able to write into the HTML directory. And if you go back into FileZilla, you can see that drag and dropping files now work correctly. And that's how you make a simple local web server. Thank you for watching.